This is Nano U from DF Audio, a standalone utility kit for modular and semi modular synthesizers. It can boost line level signals up to Eurorack level, mix and attenuate audio and CV, convert audio into CV, and generate CV offset. Nano U makes it easy to integrate guitar pedals into a Eurorack level system. Automate CV from a DAW. And much more. So let's take a closer look. Nano U has four separate channels for signal processing, organized into four columns on the front panel. The top row of sockets are inputs. Below them are the outputs, and at the bottom, we have the level controls. Channels 1 and 2 have times 10 boosting circuits and are AC coupled. While these channels will only accept audio as an input, they will output CV when the envelope followers are engaged. Channels 3 and 4 are DC coupled buffered attenuators, which work with both audio and CV signals. The mix switches allow you to mix and split signals in each channel pair. On the back, there's a DC power jack and an alternative input for channels 1 and 2 over TRS mini jack. If you remove the end cheek on the right-hand side, you can access a switch that enables a 5 volt CV offset. This offset will come through the output of channel 3, as long as there is nothing connected to the input. Now let's walk through the examples that we saw briefly at the beginning of the video. In this first example, we're using channel 2 to amplify the signal from the Volca FM, which is then going into the external audio input of the Crave. Now we're introducing a second sound source, going into channel 1. cable is going from the channel 1 output into the CV control for filter cutoff. With the envelope follower engaged, the filter is being modulated by the amplitude of the magpie's song. Now taking the triangle LFO from the Crave into channel 4 so we can mix that signal with the magpie. Now let's hook up a computer to see how these envelope followers work. We're using a TRS cable to go from the headphone output of the laptop to the auxiliary input on the back of the Nano U. Anything panned left will go through channel 1, and anything panned right will go through channel 2. Here in Ableton, we've got a little ding that sounds like this. We're going to take that signal from the channel 2 output on the Nano U to the CV input for the VCA on the Crave. Whenever that input receives a positive voltage, the volume of the Crave's internal oscillator will increase. Let's see what happens if we play that ding as normal audio. Sounds strange, and that's because, if we zoom in on the audio signal of our ding, we can see that it's made up of many little peaks and troughs. These are making the volume of the Crave's own oscillator increase and decrease really quickly. What an envelope follower does is smooth over all these peaks and troughs, so that we just have the one smooth voltage contour that we see when we're zoomed out. So let's hear that again with the envelope follower turned on. And we can even invert that signal on the Nano U so that it gives us a negative voltage, in this case, reducing the volume.
Envelope followers have many applications. Let's take a look at how you can use them to control CV accessible parameters from a DAW like Ableton. So at the top in blue, we have a MIDI track, and below that, we've got two audio tracks of continuous tone with automation on the levels. The peach colored track is panned left, and that's patched into the Craves filter cutoff CV input. The yellow track is panned right, and that's controlling the filter resonance. Now let's look at the CV offset function. When enabled, channel 3 will output a steady 5 volts as long as there is nothing plugged into its input. Here, we're taking the CV offset straight into the pitch CV on the Crave. But that's pretty extreme, so we'll use the attenuator on channel 4 to define our maximum output. You can also use the CV offset to power the DF Audio Nano E for when you want access to a certain parameter from a distance. In this next example, we're going to use the Volca sample to generate trigger sequences for the edge. We'll do this by using a high pitched tone with a very short decay time, like this. So here we have a fairly random sequence on the edge. The Volca sample has a few regular drum sounds panned left, while the short sharp sounds that we're using for the triggers are panned right. The bottom row of knobs on the edge's sequencer control the velocity of each step. If we want to use those knobs for something other than velocity, we have to override that default behavior. To do this, we're taking Nano U's CV offset into the velocity input on the edge. Now you can see that the knobs have no effect on the sound at all. Let's now take the output of the velocity sequencer to the decay of the filter envelope. Of course, we can change the rhythm by editing the pattern on the Volca sample. In this final example, we'll look at NanoU as a solution for integrating guitar pedals into a Eurorack level system. We have a Nano Patch X here, which is a little patch bay that's connected to this chorus pedal via an insert cable. This gives us access to the pedal's input and output on these two sockets. A Euro rack level signal is too hot to put straight into a guitar pedal, so we're going to first run the Craves oscillator through one of our attenuators to bring it down to a suitable level. 9 o'clock is about right. Now we can patch that signal through the pedal. We'll need to bring the level up again if it's going back into the system, so we'll use one of the boosting channels to do that. And that is Nano U from DF Audio, a versatile little box that can open up a whole lot of creative possibilities. Head to dfaudio.com.au to find out more.